Hey everybody. All right. Um, gonna make another video on my AR damage report. Uh, the last video was sort of showing off what it can do, but um, now that I've actually gotten it out there and people are starting to use it, I realized that I didn't really show people how to do. Um, so after I made the last video, I implemented a few things around like how to actually set the variables and do the controls and everything. Um, and I tried to make it as intuitive as possible, but you know, there's growing pains. So I'm um, going to do a quick video here, uh, give a few demonstrations on how it works, and uh, I am open to further feedback if people want to let me know what would make sense, what would make this a little bit easier to use. Um, so my 1.1 release that I made um, had an actual proper Z ordering to the circles, but it was causing a lot of CPU overload errors on any ship of any reasonable size. So I've rolled that back. Uh, the 1.2, I've improved the uh, details in the help thing that it gives you in the Lua channel. And also I changed it so that when you're doing, when you're setting the position of the mini version, it's in voxels now instead of in meters. Cause every time I was talking about it, I was like, so you just take the voxels, then you just divide it by four because there's four voxels per meter. And I'm like, you know what? The only way it actually shows you what the numbers are is with the voxels, so I might as well just make the input by voxels and all divide it by four rather than making you do that. Um, but I kept the way it stores it the same, so if you've already set it up uh, and have it in the databank, it will still work fine. So here I have on this ship of a friend of mine's, uh, this is 249's ship, it's an old Pioneer. Um, I just installed a fresh version of the script here. So if you run it fresh, this is what it looks like. Um, the position where it is there was designed on the Vector Voyager, because um, that's what I was using when I was last updating this code. Um, so obviously that's not gonna be terribly helpful to anyone who's just starting fresh. So I'm just gonna sort of give a quick rundown of how you get it set up for your own ship, for your own system. So right now that's all way over there. Not a great spot for it. So if you just pop into build mode here, and select an item, something, something small, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we're gonna try and find out where you want it. So we got this little room here, it's nice and empty. So I'm gonna sort of line up here and say, want it sort of in the middle here, so that's an X at 68. Uh, and then I want it sort of in the middle of the room this way, so we're gonna say, I don't know, 176, no, I'm back a little bit. Let's say 178. And we don't want it right in the floor, so let's bump that up a little bit. Say here, maybe? 22? So we want it to be at uh, x equals 68, y is negative 178, z is 22. So, uh, sorry, 68, 178, 22. So I'm going to exit build mode, open up this thing here. So I have here mini coord is the instruction. So if you just type mini coord and then the number that I just said but have already forgotten um, 68 negative 178 and 22 I think it was so you just put them in comma delimited like that uh, and then hit enter it should snap to where I told it to snap to oh I said negative 22 on the Z that's not correct. It's positive 22, obviously. So luckily there is a mini Z command. So I'm just gonna pretend I did that intentionally show this off. Set that to positive 22 and boom, here it is. So now we're up in a good spot. Uh, it's a little small though. So if you look at this thing here, I specifically have it printing out now what it currently is. So if I look up to mini scale, it's currently at 0 0.1. Um, so 0 0.1, it's too small. So we're gonna go mini scale, set it up to 0 0.2. That's uh, better, maybe a little bit big though, actually. Uh, it's pushing out the outside of the room. So let's just switch that down to a 1.5. Split the difference. Oh, ha, 1.5. 0.15 is what I meant to say. All right, that's better. So now we can sort of fit in, walk around it, see the full scope of it. Looks pretty good. Um, now here, right now, 
Uh, so it's telling us, um, let me actually just type slash help, get the list. Um, so the coordinates are 68, 178, negative 178, 22. 68, negative 178, 22. So if you don't have a data bank, uh, you know, honestly, even if you do, you might want to do this for this particular value. Uh, you can just po open up here and put it in directly into the code. So that was 68, negative 178, and 22. Now here, if I turn this off and turn it back on again, it's still going to be in the right spot. Now I didn't update the scale, so the scale is still going to be wrong. Um, but for that, what you can do, I mean, let's just do it again. You can update it in the code. Either one's fine. But what I'm going to do for this demonstration now is actually hook this up to a data bank. I'm just going to steal this random data bank attached to a chair over here. It doesn't really matter what data bank you use. And fire it up. And now it will actually remember. Oh, apparently I had something in there already. It will actually remember where it should be. I messed up. Apparently I used that data bank for tests previously, so now it moved it on me. So, I'll punch this in again. 68, negative 178, 22. Uh, and I messed something up. I don't know what I did wrong. You can't look at what you just did, so it's gone. I might put a log in to just say what you just typed so you have it there for reference. Seems like the kind of thing that might be handy. Oh, you know, I don't think I put commas. That would do it. <clears throat> All right, here we are. We're in the right spot. Scale's still wrong, though. So mini scale, 0 0.15. Makes it a little bit bigger. Now, if I turn this off, I turn it back on again. It's still here. It persists. Yay for data banks. All right, so now all this is in the data bank. So you see we're in test mode. So it's showing um, a whole bunch of blobs. Uh, now if I hit Alt-2, it removes all of my decorative tagged items. Now I built out a list just, I just took a quick scan through things that I had lying around to see what names fit for decorative items. So I did things like door, chair, um, window, panel, like for either glass panel or steel panel, um, and just added all those as lists. And then basically when it's originally populating this list, as it's scanning the ship for the first time, when it's doing this, as it's going through and popping in all the little bubbles, um, each one it's actually checking against the full list of tags to see if they're contained somewhere in the element type. Um, and if it finds it, then it removes it from the list. Now I also added in the ability for you to add things to the list on the fly. So here, if I hit Alt-2, adds them back in. Now I hit Alt-2 to remove them. Now you can look around at the design of the ship and you can clearly see, like, here's some banks of adjusters and things like that. So if I decided, for whatever reason, that I didn't care about adjusters, I don't want to see them in the damage report. Here, you can just go and say, well, for starters, I'm going to say List Deco, because that will print out a list of all of the things that I added. So these are all of the things that are currently being looked for and removed as a decorative item. So obviously only when you have removed decorative items turned on. Now I have the ability to add things to that list so I can say add tag. So I'm just going to go slash add tag and I'm going to say adjuster. If I can type it. Now it's going to detect that I've just changed that. Save it. And then when it starts the next loop scanning through items for element damage, um, it's going to also look for those things. So now you can see here, as it's scanning, it's gradually removing all of the adjusters. And the little chat pops up, says done the rescan, resume in normal operations. So now there are no longer any adjusters on this list. And you can do that for any number of things that you want. So I can do add tag container. I can do add tag engine. I can do Add tag gravity. I can type tag correctly. I can do add tag uh, hover. No, well, let's go booster for my vertical boosters. I can go add tag stabilizer. 
Oh, break. Yeah. Let's kill the brakes, too. Why not? Now, oh, I should change that, actually. When you add a new tag, it stops updating for a previous tag, but then it will pick up when it starts the next round. So now it started the next round, and so now it's just going to remove everything that I've added. Oh, you know what? I missed fuel tanks. So there's still going to be some things left in here. Oh, and there's also a territory scanner on the ship and a warp drive. So there'll be a few things still left behind. Um, oh, a few more, too. What else did I miss? Vertical booster. Thought I got that. Well, apparently I didn't. Anyways, so now you can see I've stripped a ton of things off of this list. So there's still a few things remaining. Uh, and you can do the same thing the other way around by just removing tags. Um, so if you do list tag again. Oh, sorry, it's not list tag, it's list deco. Someday I'll learn my own commands that I designed. So now you can see here I added adjuster, container, engine, gravity, stabilizer, brake. Yeah, missed booster. I probably spelled tag wrong. Um, yeah, and now if I hit Alt-2, they all start snapping back into place. Now this is currently in test mode, um, but the ship conveniently, 249, left it with a few elements damaged. So I'm just going to turn off test mode, and now as it's scanning the health, it's actually replacing them with the actual damage. So you can see, this is honestly going to be probably the primary use case of this of this whole script, is when you have just a few damaged elements left and you don't know where they are. You know, for the most part, when you crash a ship, you just walk around the ship and you repair everything, because you can see it, right? You just see this is broken, that's broken, this is broken, that's broken. But sometimes there's a few things that's like, I don't know where that is. So in this case here, there are just four elements left that apparently he didn't notice were broken when he last repaired the ship. So I can just look around here and I can see, hey, there's a sliding door that's broken. And here, a long light, and a long light, and a data bank. So, um, interestingly here, if I hit Alt-2 to remove the decorative items, we'll see that data bank is still there, because I consider data banks to be important, because sometimes you, know, you have your flight script information on them. If you don't, you can add a tag, and then it will not show the data banks anymore. So... I'm going to hit Alt-2 to bring all that stuff back. But in the meantime, let's switch it into full-scale mode by hitting Alt-1. And now I can see where these broken things are. So, data bank is apparently here. And if we look, oh yeah, look at that. It's tiny. It's embedded in the voxels, but it's there. And that's exactly how you could miss things like this, right? They're just tiny, hidden away, very easy to miss. And now here these lights are on the outside of the ship which is certainly how he missed those guys but then the most interesting one is actually that sliding door because it is actually completely hidden in the voxel work which makes it super easy to miss so you see here there's nothing it's not visible at all anywhere but there is a sliding door in there. So it's designed so that when you hit this button, it covers or uncovers the access to the core. But I would literally have to rip out the voxel work in order to see this door. So I'm not going to do that to 249 ship. But yeah, so this is basically how it would work. And now that it's all set up and in the right spot, if I turn this off and turn it back on, all that information is saved, except apparently it's still in test mode. So. I will be updating that to make sure that, that actually persists properly, because, whoops. Um, so yeah, I'll fix that for the 1.2 release before I actually post it on Discord, because I haven't done that yet. But yeah, so that's a basic rundown of how it works. Um, there's a lot of other options, too. So you see here, um, aesthetically, you could do things like the good opacity, like for the green elements, is currently set at 0 0.2. But if you think that the the green things are a little bit too intense. If you want them to fade away into the background a little bit more, you can set it down. And now you can hardly see the green ones. So the uh, damage elements really pop. Um, and you can also set the damage elements to be, to have a higher opacity. If you want, that's fine. Um, the, the mini cords, 
Uh, you can toggle the name display. So right now, when you mouse over something, it tells you what its name is. If you want, you can say HP, and that adds or that toggles the HP showing, and name toggles the name showing. And again, all that should save and persist through. Um, but there's other interesting things like uh, the pop-in speed. So here, when I hit Alt-2, and you see how they, you see how fast they pop in. So I set them up so it takes them 45 frames to pop in. So I had to do, I have it doing a whole bunch of math to figure out exactly how much they need to multiply by in order to go through that whole sequence over 45 frames. Um, but if you want it to be faster, you can make it faster. Um, so you can do pop in frames and just set it down to like 10. And now if I hit Alt 2 to remove them and Alt 2 to bring them back again, see they pop in really fast. Or if you want, you can set it longer. You see they have a very slow and casual growth. Kind of nifty, if that's something you care about. Uh, there's also basic stuff like scan frequency and scan batch size, which is basically how many elements it scans and how fast it scans them. So if you've got a really big ship and you start hitting, I mean, I would say if you start hitting overload errors, but honestly, if you hit overload errors, it's more likely a graphical problem than it is a scanning problem. It was originally designed for that um, back when I was putting this just on screens, not in the full AR version. Um, so you're probably not going to save much by doing that, but you could try it. Um, or you can, you know, ramp it up if you're, if you've got a smaller ship and you want something that's a little bit more snappy and responsive. So like right now, when I hit alt nine, you can see exactly how fast it takes to go over the whole ship, right? You can see as everything disappears, how fast it disappears. That tells you how fast it's actually scanning through the elements. So I don't know. Let's try it. I haven't actually tried this. This is a real time test. So if I say scan batch size set it to 100 and scan frequency to it's a 0 0.25 let's set it to 0 0.1 now let's go help and say yeah it's at 100 and 0 0.1 so now let's deactivate this reactivate this is it actually saying did it save them? That's the first question. Yes, it did. Good. Unlike test mode, this one did actually work. So as it's scanning, we can see they're all coming in damaged. Um, and in just a second, once it's done loading, done initial pass, starting upkeep. All right, now let's turn off test mode. Let's see how fast it snaps through them all. Whoop. Scan the whole ship like that. So. Yeah, I set it lower intentionally to try and keep the processing speed down, but honestly, given how this is used, it might make sense to just set it up. Make it go a little quicker. Okay, all right, so I have one thing that I need fixing. Uh, I can do that, but on the whole, I think this is a good rundown of how it works, how you can see how it goes. Hopefully, that makes sense for people to be able to use this thing a little bit easier on their own. Have a good one.